back here with this journey, Spirit of Justice, where uh, Apollo and Dirk are having some very awkward father-son time, which I still find a little weird somehow. I feel like, I mean, Apollo seems to corroborate that this guy is legit, but I keep just keep getting the feeling that him coming to Apollo for this is not. That, so the two reasons he, he seems to have come to Apollo are just because he's a convenient lawyer who can help him with this, and also that yeah, he gets to rekindle that father-son bond, but I feel like there's a third reason somehow, and I obviously don't know what it is, but I feel like he's he's here for more than just those things. And maybe I'm completely wrong. But anyway, we're hopefully going to be able to get to the end of this investigation section today. I assume we're going to be defending Dats. Someone's going to claim that he killed our, uh, Dr. Buff. Probably politicians going to claim it. But we still don't really know for sure. Um, but we've gotten quite far into this investigation. And we just have to talk to Sarge now, who is probably going to shoot us a few more times. I still don't know if he's supposed to be in his 20s or like a little kid. And actually, I don't even know if it's a dude either. We, I think we only called... They only say he because Sarge told us to address them as sir. But we don't have actually... They, when, when we first mentioned them, Dirk said, just said that the doctor had a kid. It wasn't actually, even though it wasn't Dirk who said, told it. Someone else told us that the doctor had a kid. And they kept saying kid instead of son or daughter. So we don't actually know the gender of, of this kid. We only started saying he because of the, I assume the voice coming out of the drone is, is sounds like, <laughs> but they could be using a voice modulator. We've not met the person in person, but Dirk is saying to them, if anyone can understand this sadness in your heart, it's him. <laughs> Attention! I salute you, Comrade Justice! You are no longer a private in the Buff Army! Henceforth, you will be no a uh, corporal! <laughs> Co corporal? Congratulations on your promotion, Corporal Justice. I'm just glad that seemed to cheer him up a bit. And he didn't shoot me either. Oh! D tea? Now, Comrade, let's toast to your new stripes! And call me Sarge. Don't be shy. We're a band of brothers now. <laughs> Now's our chance, Corporal. Ask him about the Founder's Orb. You're just getting way too much of a kick out of this. Yeah, no kidding. You only got shot once, okay? <laughs> like, that, that hurted. That hurt like a butt cheek on a stick, dude. Mother trucker. Uh, Sarge, sir, do you have any idea where the orb might be? It was here in Papa's study until last night, but he said he was going to go hide it somewhere. <laughs> He mentioned something about a shady character being after it. Where do you think he could have hidden it? Hmm, somewhere in the village, I'd guess. He said he'd found a suitable hiding place for it. So it was here last night. That is until he went out to hide it somewhere in the village. The only question is where. Maybe he left some clue here in his study. Let's search the place again. For like the third time, hoping he left a clue. Maybe that, I mean, this glasses and pyramids seem kind of, they just, they stick out so much like we're gonna, like they're gonna be removed. Like we're gonna pick them up. We should also find more, uh, more about Dr. Buff. It might steer us toward the hiding place. Yes, uh, let's chat. We'll, we shouldn't, we shouldn't just cut this conversation off short and be like, thanks, that's enough. Let's go look around again. So, Sarge, what was your father like? Papa was as kind as mama was courageous. His whole reason for moving to the countryside was for me. What do you mean? I initiated my siege defense strategy after Mama died. Papa was so worried about me, he moved us here to the countryside. He thought the fresh air, blue skies, and natural surroundings might alter my tactics. What a fine father. He even quit his position at the university to move here. He did? He did. He gave up his beloved research position just for me! A parent must be prepared to sacrifice everything for his child. That's what Papa said. Well, I'm feeling about two inches tall right now. I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> There's no one in the world I respected more than him. But that just makes his passing all the more devastating. <laughs> Papa, may you continue your beloved research up there with the angels. May he indeed. They didn't teach us too much more about the situation. By the way, am I allowed to show him stuff yet or is it still what insubordination? What's that? It's my attorney's badge, sir. You mean like a medal? What act of valor earned you such an honor? I rescued my clients from those who would brand them as guilty, sir. A heroic act indeed! Thank you for your kind words, sir! This whole sir thing is getting real old real quick. I thought he was going to say it's getting kind of funny. <laughs> Please take a look at this. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Corporal Justice. How does that aid you on the battlefield? Um, well, if you count the courtroom as a battlefield, it's a fairly useful weapon. Good answer! A military man must know his weapons inside and out. Keep up the good work, Corporal! This is, sir! Yes, sir! I guess that's all he has to say about that. <laughs> Corporal Justice, you showed her a bitter past. You've been through quite a lot yourself, Sarge. 
Corporal, if I may. Um. Yes? Well, um. It doesn't have to be that often. But. Would you mind coming over from time to time? You want me to visit you? Only if you want to, of course. Uh, sure. I'll come by. I'll even bring along my coworkers, Sarge. Really? Yay! Our band of brothers continues to grow in rank! <laughs> <laughs> nice work, son. Glad to see you haven't changed one bit. What's that supposed to mean? What indeed? Something about Naita? Apollo makes fast friends or something? Not sure. Why? Why did Papa have to fall in battle? He's putting on a brave face, but he's still just a child. Child, okay. Supposed to be very young. I'm gonna keep his voice anyway, though. In honor of Papa's heroic sacrifice, let us march on, comrade, to victory! Huh? I mean, sir! Yes, sir! Are you two seriously bent on waging war against that bookcase? Do you, look, do you want me to get shot again or what? Shut up! <laughs> Alright, the, the drone is really starting to grow on me. The way it twiddles its mustache and the way it does the sassy little point. It's like K. Rool in, in Smash Ultimate. And if I present you your own drone? It looks like you can do everything by yourself. Indeed! I can even cook and build things whenever I want! So there's really no reason for you to leave your room, huh? Yes, but there is still one gaping hole in my siege defense. Going to the bathroom. I was going to say, that seems like something you need to leave your room for. Yeah, in nature's calls, it's best not to fight it. Yes, all great tacticians will say, never wage a battle you have no hope of winning. I shudder to imagine this, the, the attempts one might have attempted at evading such a call. Very good, so we presented everything we can. Uh, we talked to him as all the talking points, so that, uh, we're just looking for anything else that might be a lead on the Founders' Orbit in the study and hoping to find it. But I don't imagine we are going to before the uh, trial. As expected, I can look at this thing again, because it just seems so important, right? Perhaps, uh, Sarge will have some extra in intel for us on these. Oh, has Sarge been added? Yes, uh, uh, so, politician's been added. He's 25, which I wouldn't have guessed. He looks like 50 to me. <laughs> He's looking to represent Karain Village. His uh, remarkable self-confidence is blinding. I have expected him to bust out and- <laughs> One of these times. <laughs> of course I'm perfect! Sergeant Buff, age who knows? Dr. Sarkoos of child, he lost his mother in a fire. Again, we're saying he, but I guess we don't really know that. I can't wait to see this drone testify. <laughs> Are these the doctors? Yes, those are Papa's reading glasses. He said he'd been having trouble reading lately. But those glasses seemed to help. Huh, stumble with his vision, maybe that could contribute to him falling. Reading glasses, eh? I'll just hold on to these. Dirk, don't tell me you're having trouble reading, too. I perish the thought. I, I just don't want to leave any stone unturned. I think, <laughs> I mean, I feel like they could be useful anyway. The fact that they're just on the desk here looks really conspicuous, like he meant to take them with him or something. The doctor's poor eyesight meant he couldn't read anything without these. They were found on his desk. Ah, well, that'll be useful later, I'm sure. Oh, so maybe someone else is going to say that uh, it wasn't actually Dr. Buff who wrote this. Uh, someone else wrote it and he just agreed to sign it. But we're going to be like, well, he couldn't have read it without the glasses. What about this pyramid thing? Sarge, sir, do you ever read these books? Never mind, I'm talking about the books, I guess. Why, of course! Soldiers must have extensive knowledge as well as fighting prowess! I'm learning all I can each and every day in preparation for the big battle! The big battle? Sir? Um, you know, for when I go back to school. I'll need to be up to date on every subject. Stuff like, um, you know, the latest comics and Hollywood gossip. Oh, I see. I'm about reading, writing, and arithmetic. Well, I'm rooting for you, Sarge. F thanks. I'll try my best. I have no doubt you will. Uh, we can look at the coat again. It's a raincoat. Hmm? Huh? It's a bit wet, and there's fresh mud on it. It must mean someone wore it recently. Indeed. Maybe even as recently as last night. It would have to be, if it was still wet. But, like, if it were, if it were like, bundled up in a cupboard somewhere, I could understand it being wet from some days ago, but hung up as it is. Still wet must mean, like, in the past 48 hours, I would wager. Sarge, did it rain here last night? Negative! There wasn't a cloud in the sky! Hmm. How did this raincoat get all muddy and wet? When I saw it last evening, it looked pretty clean and dry to me. That means it got like this later at night. Interesting. Good eye, son. This may very well turn out to be a vital clue. I mean, it sure would have to, right? It'd probably tell us where he went, uh, where he went to hide the thing. Somewhere where there already is water, like by a nearby lake? Or did he drive all the way to somewhere where it was raining last night? Are we gonna pull a Sherlock here and be like, Where's the only place within a ten mile radius that it's been raining since last night? Cardiff. This computer could provide some useful information if it weren't so password protected. Drat. It's password protected. I haven't heard the word drat in a very long time. Jerk, you're good at getting into places you're not supposed to. Don't look at me. I don't know the first thing about computers. <laughs> Leave it to me! Wait, did that just say, Leave it me? <laughs> Leave it me! 
<laughs> Modern day warrior must be well versed in technology and have mean, mean pride. After all, he who controls information controls the battlefield. So you know your pa's password, is it? Clickety clack, clickety clack, clickety clack. Oh, nice. And is that your mother? As the desktop background? And I'm in! Looks like modern day warriors have mean, mean keyboard skills, too. Especially through a drone. Very impressive. Okay, let's see what we can find. Oh, this ought to be interesting. Clickety clack, clickety clack, tippity tap, tippity tap. Oh, what's this? Minesweeper? Apollo, what is this? It's nothing! An email message. Oh, interesting. Okay, uh, what kind of other apps they have? They've got a file folder, they've got, uh, Clouds the app, they've got, uh, a, 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 a hyperlink to the Target website, uh, that electroplankton rhythm game thing for Nintendo's Wii, um, that, like, 48 game where you swipe the things along settings, which is for some reason in the middle of all this, uh, they've got some document on their desktop, this is, like, one of those proprietary apps that they come with, like, gaming laptops where it lets you control the fans and stuff, another folder, uh, and... I don't want to know what this is. As for the sent email, sent to paw711 at nmail, uh, from Doc Buff. <laughs> at nothing, I guess. The subject was research report. I deciphered the patterns, but have yet to crack the riddle. The opaque crystal orb is the key. Dr. Buff has your- Oh, and that's in response to Dr. Buff has your research coming along. I guess you would know what that was about from considering who sent it to you. But this is a really shoddy email to send. Dr. Buff, how's the research coming along? About what? I'm a researcher. Do you have any idea how little that narrows it down? We should also check the deleted, I reckon. Oh, this is interesting. It's a research report to whoever asked the doctor to study the orb. To study the orb. Words. <laughs> Leave it me. Here, I put the data on this. Take it and use it well, soldier. Is that all his emails or just that one single one? <laughs> Email out of the court record, thank you. Don't ask me how I'm able to check it without a computer uh, handy, but I am. It seems to be just this one single email that they sent me, but it includes a picture, which is nice. So that may well be what the Founder's Orb looks like, if it isn't in, uh, indeed the uh, Crystal of Amy Faye. Or perhaps those are one of the same, who knows? We got some conflicting information coming from Mr. Attition, anyway. Before we carry on looking around the rest of the room, although this is very useful stuff already, what do you think of these glasses, the raincoat, and the USB key? Not a damn thing. I gotta say, this is like one of the, one of the, some of the most evidence we've ever gotten from one room in any of these games, right? Like we got the research notes, the photograph, the diagram, the drone, the glasses, the raincoat, and the USB key were all we got in this in the confines of this one room. Very interesting. Interesting also that there aren't really many rooms to explore in this whole area so far. It's just the village and the study. Nevertheless, uh, let's look around for anything else that might have uh, the nature of which might have changed since we have Sarge with us now to help us with more details. Exterminate, exterminate, destroy all humans. What's this thing's problem? <laughs> Just said targets before, now it's changed to humans. It's an oop art! An out-of-place artifact! Papa wanted an online auction! An online auction? Yes, he said it's an alien weapon that destroyed an entire ancient civilization! Where do I even start with an explanation like that? <laughs> yeah, I didn't help it! Wait, what, what, what do you mean? What do you mean, a sturdy spirit of justice? <laughs> Aliens are real? <laughs> this urn with Amy painted on it looks really old, but I don't think it's going to provide any info we need. The uh, right you are. It's Dad's suitcase. It's full of survival gear and... Questionable souvenirs, but we already got his passport, so we can leave it for me for now. Staircase? This is extremely suspicious staircase. Is your room upstairs, Sarge? I guess earlier when they said it is this place, when he referred uh, Dirk the player to this place as a house, it is also where the doctor lived, even though it's his study. Yes, it's the one at the end of the hall! What do you say you come out so we can enjoy a snack together? But, but I promise we won't bite. Why did you even bring up biting? If you insist. Then I'm not going to talk to you anymore! <laughs> no, wait. Dirk, you better apologize quick. I'm sorry for pushing. Very well. As long as you don't do it again. I'll let it slide this one time. Very good. Not coming out. At least we did try. And that appears to be all that is really worth examining in this area. Let me just give it one more quick once over. And then we'll head out to, uh... Well, I'm not sure where yet. I guess just the village. See if we can find some trace of where he might have been that was wet. Ah, the shoes. It's a shoe cubby. Hmm, these shoes look like they belong to Sergeant and his dad. Oh, these boots here are a little damp. But it looks like there's something inside this one. Maybe Dr. Buff wore them last night. Might lead us to where he hid the orb. Let's take a closer look. Yes, let's. Something inside this one. How do you mean? Like a sample of dirt? Oh, moss or something. What is that? 
Nothing particularly interesting here. I beg to differ. Sorry, let me get a better angle on it. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. Something's getting off a soft glow inside this boot. But it's too dark in there to see what it is. Well, that's all there, I guess. Probably Emma would have some thoughts about that. Bottom's all marked up. There's a question mark on the bottom of this boot. Is there? I don't see it. Papa had these custom made for his archaeological fieldwork. He had the soul of an adventurer. This boot. This boot had the soul of an adventurer, too. No kidding, but question mark? I don't see the question mark. Am I dumb? What do they mean there's a question mark on the sole of the boot? Do they just mean this thing here going to this and then this? Is, is like vaguely question mark shaped? Yeah, I guess if you, if you started it from here and ignored these two, it's like, oh, but drop. Looks like a question mark. Right, uh, something I can in investigate about the, the Velcro strap. We might get a better look inside if we undid these straps. And there are laces beneath them as well. It looks like some kind of glowing moss. Could have come from wherever the doctor went last night. Must have gotten him with some of that mud. It might be worth looking into. You'd think it'd be hard to get that quantity of something into your boot if you weren't, like, running around panicked. So it almost suggests there was a struggle. If it'll help us pinpoint where the doctor hid the orb. Glowing moss added to the court record. Indeed. I mean, how many places are there around here that have glowing moss? Stuck to the insole of the doctor's boot. Probably got there when he went to hide the founder's orb. I'd say that's... I dare say that's very useful information. Emma will surely be able to tell us something about that. Okay, let's go over what we learned so far. Wherever it was that Dr. Buff went, he needed a raincoat. And it was somewhere where this glowing moss grows. Any ideas where that might be, Sarge? Negative, comrade! I hate to say my intel's a little thin on this one. I've been occupied with my siege defense strategy ever since we moved to the village. Hmm, if it weren't raining, but there were water coming from above you such that you'd need the raincoat, and there were moss growing, it makes it sound like a cave, right? With water dripping from the ceiling? Cave or grotto or some similar structure, maybe under a big tree? Well, son, it seems we have no other choice. We'll have to ask the locals if they know of a place like that. Oh yes, I simply can't wait. Before we head out, any thoughts about the moss? None. So to the village we head, and hopefully we run into someone who isn't politician, who we can ask <laughs> politely and calmly about this, uh, this here moss and all. May 16th, Karayan Village! These posters weren't here before, they replaced the goddamn wonderful Amazing Nine Tails poster, how dare they! Ugh. Feels like somebody's watching me, it's really creeping me out. Oh, it's just politicians' campaign posters. Why did he put these up? Whatever. I've got more important things to be paying attention to. What great weather! It really lifts the spirits. I know. After our little treasure hunt, what do you say we go hunting, son? Hunting? We used to do that a lot, didn't we? Just look at that mountain. I bet there are some feisty wild boars up there. I, I think I'll pass, but thanks. Oh, so hunting's a no-go. Um, well, well, I guess that wild boar stew will have to wait then. Uh, hmm? Apollo, something seems different from the last time we were here. Oh, don't worry, I noticed. <laughs> uh, you mean the posters? No, not those. They can't be, uh, easel? What's he talking about? He said I should take a look around myself. It's not like I can ask him. <laughs> that would never work. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, man! You poor child. How is he going to survive all on his own? Yeah, it's not like he can go out grocery shopping on his own. We should drop off some food later. No, that would only make it worse. We should be encouraging him to come out on his own. Once his food runs out, he'll have to leave the house if he wants to eat. Talk about your old school siege tactics. Sounds more like you want to starve him out. Yeah, I'm more concerned with how he gets food after we stop giving him food. <laughs> Maybe Phoenix will adopt him too. <laughs> what to do? Um... Yes? What is it? I talk about an awkward silence. I have no idea what to say. Yeah, I've got nothing. Oh, come on, son. Don't tell me you've got nothing. <laughs> I, I got nothing. Sorry about it. Well, I've got a minute. Let's just uh, present to him everything new we've got. He's got nothing new, so let's examine that easel and uh, anything else that may have changed since. When did politician have a chance to put up all these election posters? That old fool keeps sticking them on our houses! He's a disgrace to his distinguished heritage! He's doing this without permission? <laughs> Why doesn't that surprise me? Right, this easel! Someone was painting a picture of something. We're we gonna meet some lovely painterly type? Gentle, artistic soul? It would surely be a nice change of pace from the screaming sergeants and loudmouth leaders. What do we have here? It looks like an unfinished picture. Like something a little kid might paint? Hmm, you're right. But I can't quite tell what it's of. Well, way to judge, they might just be starting to make just be a first draft. 
I think it's supposed to be nighttime, but what's that thing on the left? Well, it's that big prayer rock we've saw, although I don't understand. And this is, uh, someone in Dr. Ruff's raincoat. Um, a monster or some kind of alien, perhaps? In any case, it's a pretty poor excuse for a drawing. Dude, you guys are so judgmental! You don't even know the circumstances under which it was made! <laughs> but it looks like, uh, someone in Dr. Ruff's raincoat walking past this... This station right beside this uh, prayer stone thing. The Karine Boulder. What did you expect from a little kid? Uh, little kid? Oh, uh, little kid? Huh? Oh, it's you, Pearl. Why, Mr. Apollo, is that you? What a pleasant surprise. I didn't realize you were living back here still, taking care of yourself, I suppose. It's been quite some time. How have you been? Uh, fine, thanks. You're looking good too, Pearl. Aren't you going to introduce me, son? <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> Every time I introduce you to someone, you immediately rip the piss out of me. Of course. Uh, this is Pearl Fay. She's a spirit medium here in Karine Village. Pearl, this is Dirk, my uh, uh, client. Hello, sir. Pleased to meet you. If there's anything I can do to help, please let me know. Nice to meet you, too. And what a polite little girl you are. Uh... Um, actually, I'm a high schooler. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> sorry about that. So, uh, you're a spirit medium? Does that mean you can channel spirits, then? That is what that means. Yes, I'm still in training, though. <laughs> Every time we hear that from someone in this series, it's like they turn out to be, like, world-class, ultimate legend status. <laughs> but I'm well versed in the art of spirit channeling. Well, now, isn't that something? I mean, back in my country, our little princess hasn't channeled a single spirit yet. Pretty impressive, young lady. <laughs> oh, but, but compared to Mystic Maya, there's so much more I must learn. Mystic Maya? Oh, right, Maya Faye, Mr. Wright's former courtroom assistant. He told me all about her. She's a spirit medium, too, if memory serves. Yes, she's an amazing medium. And soon, she'll be the next head of the Faye clan, too. Mediums and spirit channeling. I've heard all about it from Mr. Wright. He said that mediums will even physically become the person they're channeling. I wonder if even Little Pearl would turn into a hulking giant if she had to channel one. That's, the, that's my understanding of it. Man, I hadn't thought about how weird that is that Apollo really wouldn't have come into contact with any of this stuff over the course of things. Because it's easy to forget with how public some of the cases are in the original trilogy that the majority of the world still doesn't believe in spirit channeling in this universe. I hope you don't mind me asking, what brings you all the way out here, here Mr. Apollo? No, oh, just a small matter to take care of. And wait, would it happen to be the matter Mr. Edgeworth is looking into? Uh oh. <laughs> why doesn't why doesn't that sound good? Prosecutor Edgeworth, what's he doing here? Oh, so it's a different matter than. Well, I don't know. <laughs> what's Edgeworth doing here? <laughs> because I just saw him a moment ago. He appeared to be searching for something. Huh? Hmm. And so was Phoenix, apparently. Mr. Edgeworth is a friend of Mr. Rice and the district's chief prosecutor. Why would he be here in Karine? Well, no point obsessing over it. Apparently, we've just he, he and Phoenix are just wandering around past us, and we're just barely missing each other as we go. Come to think of it, you live here in Karine Village, don't you, Pearl? Yes, I was born and raised here. For a time, you were kind of living with Phoenix and Maya in... Well, they didn't live in the office, but... You were, like, heading there every day to help out with cases and stuff. This is perfect, Apollo. Let's ask the young lady if she knows where the doctor might have gone last night. I was thinking the exact same thing. Good to see you on the wavelength one of these times. Maybe I should show her what we found in the doctor's study, yes. I concur wholeheartedly that we should show her the moss at the very least. But first, let's chat! Horion Village! What a peaceful place. Uh... Nothing beats mountain air. Many of the villagers have left for the city, but I just love it here. Blue skies, lush forests, star-filled skies at night, and fireflies in the summer. Plus, the big, beautiful blue ocean is just beyond that mountain. The ocean? What do you say we go for a swim, son? Oh, um, I think I'll pass. Besides, I, I can't swim. Um, Pearl? Karine Village is, like, the home of spirit mediums, right? Yes, and I'm part of a long line of mediums. I've never seen a channeling before, but... Is it possible to channel the spirit of anyone who's passed away? No, not just anyone. You must know their face and true name. Really? You can channel a spirit just by knowing their face and name? It's an amazing ability. It is, but it can only be learned by those with a gift occurring in certain bloodlines. In years of intense training. At present, Mystic Maya and I are the only ones in our village who can channel spirits. Is that right? I guess that does hold with what we knew before. 
Looks like spirit mediums are highly valued here, much like they are back in Kurain. I heard there used to be many more of us a long time ago, but now we're in very short supply. Most of the women nowadays don't want to stay, they want to throw the big city. Yeah, well, you guys aren't exactly close to any shopping malls or nightclubs out here. But what about you? Are you not interested in things like that? Who, me? Well, I, uh, I wouldn't mind a new outfit or two, and, well, uh, um, uh, never mind. It's okay, Pearl. <laughs> you are at that age, after all. You know, the age of wanting more than one outfit. <laughs> there comes a time in every young adult's life <laughs> where they want more than one single outfit. <laughs> oh, we met this weirdo earlier named Paul Attition. Do you know anything about him? Yes, he's been campaigning a lot around here lately. And the noise he's been making has become quite a problem. No kidding. People are especially upset that he's campaigning at all hours of the night and <laughs> day. God. Well, the local police should arrest him for disturbing the peace. Unfortunately, there's little they can do because the Attition family is so powerful. Well, isn't he the proverbial pampered provincial prince? He seems pretty intent on winning here in Grind. Is there some special reason why? Uh, I'm not sure, but I have an idea. The spirit mediums of Grind once held considerable sway in the political world. Judging by his slogan, maybe that's what he's after. Great, so he's just another politician seeking powerful connections. The ability to commune with the dead gives comfort to those anxious about the future. Tiny Kura'in has preserved its independence by the Queen's power of spirit channeling. It must play a similar role in this village. I see what you mean. Politicians are often chosen for what they say they can do, but uh, being able to prove it <laughs> with an ability like this would certainly give you some more sway. Yes, even today many here revere those with spirit medium blood flowing in their veins. So basically, as politicians' benefactor goes, so goes the whole village. Who is this benefactor? Who could hold this much sway over Karine Village? Gotta be Ingo, right? It just has to be. That sketchy bastard. I don't believe he doesn't have his fingers in at least a few pies he shouldn't. Oh, hey, Pearl! I'm still an attorney. I haven't gotten lost my badge yet. <laughs> Seeing you present your badge like that reminds me of when I used to investigate cases alongside Mr. Nick. You used to help Mr. Wright all the time, I hear. That I did. Doing so helped me expand my horizons beyond this tiny little village. <laughs> I still love it. It's one of the best lines in the whole series when, when, when Pearl shows up. I think it's in the second game when Pearl shows up uh, in the courtroom and Phoenix is like, how did you get here from the village? It's like an hour away by train. And she's like, what's a train? And he's like, don't tell me you walked here. And she's like, no, of course not. I ran. I would never make it in time if I walked. So I'm sure one of the horizons she had expanded was <laughs> the actual physical limits of how far she could run in one day. So please, Mr. Apollo, if there's anything I can help you with, just let me know. I will. What I'd really like is her help with cleaning the office again. <laughs> she did a bit of that at the end of Dual Destinies, didn't she, when Apollo dipped? Oh, um, sorry. I, I wish I could help, but no, don't worry about it. I I'm sorry I wasted your time like that. Um, at least let me offer you some tea. I, I mean, you must be tired from all your investigating. Oh, uh, no, you don't have to do that. We'll be just fine, thank you. She's so polite, it's hard not to feel rude around her. I know what you mean. It's like if you even barely inconvenience her, you're like, Joe, what have I done? Right, I won't show her all the stuff we found in the office just yet, or the study. I'd rather, uh... Actually, we already talked to her about everything we could, right? And is there any more uh, examining here that can happen now that she's here? It would seem not. Very well, then I will show you the things we found. The moss is the most important one, but uh, I suppose you, if that was you who painted that, then you might have seen the raincoat as well. Nothing on the glasses. I assume nothing on the USB key. Ba -da -ba -dum -bum -bum. How about the raincoat that and... Uh, da -dum -da -da. No, I guess maybe she didn't paint that thing. Because you'd think she would recognize this. The moss, then! Where might we find some of this? Pearl, do you have any idea where this moss might grow? Uh, that looks like Mitama moss. It grows on Mount Mitama and gives off a soft glow in the dark. M Mount Mitama? See that mountain over there? That's Mount Mitama. I do indeed. Do I have to go up there? And how would one get there? You can take a bus from that bus stop over there. Does a bus really fit in this tiny little lane here? Oh, I mean, I guess, I don't know why. I thought there would be a bus stop otherwise, but... <laughs> um, may I ask why you're so interested in that moss? Well, um, Dr. Buff was supposed to give us something, but it seems he hid it somewhere last night. He did? Maybe that's why he, um... Uh... Pearl? Do you know something that might help us? Um, well... Sounds like I better find out what she knows. Where the doctor went? I wonder why she would want to not say anything. Just because it's rude to tell you where people went? I mean, he's dead now. Pearl, do you have any idea where Dr. Buff might have gone last night? Um... Well... Ba boom 
no, I thought it was going to do us, uh, give us a, uh, perceived moment. Uh, about that. Um, all I know is Dr. Buff is somewhere out Mount Midama. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, no, it is that what's, what's going about, that is what's about to happen. I've never seen that sweat drip down her forehead like that. Is that the tick? <laughs> My bracelet, it's reacting. Which means Pearl's hiding something from me. <laughs> It's gonna be somewhere on Mount Minamaz the thing. She knows exactly where he went. And I think I saw a drop of sweat actually go down her forehead. Such that, uh. That I've never seen before. Never mind, that wasn't it. That was just part of that sprite, and I've just never seen that before. Um. Is she chewing her thumb, maybe? Like her thumbnail? It's either the was somewhere on, or it's the Mount Mitama bit that's wrong. Either she knows exactly where he was on Mount Mitama, or she doesn't genuinely believe he was that at that mountain. Let's look at her uh, other hand here. I wonder why she'd want to keep it a secret, just out of politeness, I guess, is probably. Knowing, knowing Pearl, that's probably it. <laughs> Not to worry. Super tick observer Apollo is on the case. Ah, uh, yes. She's playing with... Uh, is that a, um, like a super small Magatama? Gotcha! Pearl, you seem uneasy about something. Anyone would feel uneasy being stared at like that. Huh? But I... I'd be unnerved too. I mean, your eyes are practically popping out of your head. I, I, I get it. I'll tone it down a little. Guess I was wrong. Oh, wait, huh? Oh, so that was definitely the tick, but I just, like, I wasn't focused on it. Right. I was wondering why that music didn't stop. Gotcha! Gotcha! There we go. I looked slightly to the left this time, so it counts! I've never seen this animation where she has the sweat running down her forehead, though. That's why I thought that was going to be the tick. Pearl, you seem anxious around the topic of Mount Minima. I could tell because you'd run your thumb over a splotch of dried paint as he said it. Oh, that's what that is. Oh, um... Well... That nighttime painting is yours, isn't it? Um... This is so embarrassing. As you saw, I'm not a very good artist. I mean, I could tell what it was. I think it was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that picture has nothing to do with Dr. Buff. I'm not so sure about that. In fact, I'm going to guess that while you were out here painting last night, you actually saw the good doctor heading out to Mount Minima from the bus stop. No! I, I didn't see anything like that, I swear! No, I'm positive you saw the doctor. After all, he's right here in your picture. Hey, whoop, boop, 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 boop. Take, Take that! that! Y you think that's the doctor? I may not be a very good artist, but at least I know how to draw a person. Okay, if this isn't a person, then what is it? Uh... That's a... a rain spirit! Um, and what's a rain spirit doing at a bus stop? Uh, oh, um... Rain spirits have places to go, too! Hmm. This is getting ridiculous. Sorry, Pearl, but you're not a very good liar. That is Dr. Buff, and this piece of evidence proves it. Take that! This is the raincoat we found in the doctor's study. It's still wet and muddy, so we know that someone wore it last night. Now see how this pattern is the same as the rain spirit in your picture? <sighs> you didn't see a rain spirit last night. You saw Dr. Buff wearing this raincoat. Uh, uh, I... I'm sorry. I, I know I'm not supposed to lie, but... But what? It's okay. Tell your dear Uncle Polly. <laughs> what occurred? I'm sorry I didn't tell you before, Mr. Apollo. But I did see the doctor last night. It's all right. Just please tell me everything you know. Of course. Um, I was painting out here last night when the doctor came up to the bus stop. He was wearing a raincoat even though it wasn't raining and a helmet with a light on it. Oh, sounds like he was well prepared for something. I know. That's why I asked him if he was going off exploring again. He looked startled like he hadn't noticed me there, and then he suddenly said, Please don't tell anyone you saw me here. Huh. Why would he want to silence you like that? I mean, presumably he didn't want anyone to know where the orb would be hidden, but she didn't seem to understand that he had the orb at that point, so I suppose it doesn't... Uh, well, no, maybe he probably just didn't want anyone to know where the orb was going. That said, at the same time... If we're assuming he did write the note about the orb, um, then he pres he thought he was in danger, so I think that is fair enough. Seems like reasonable reasons to me. Something must have happened to spook him, and he didn't want anyone to know where he was going to hide the orb. But where could he have been going dressed like that? 
My best guess is a cave somewhere on Mount Mitama. I hear there's a cave where mediums of the Karayan tradition went to train a long time ago. The legend has it, there are some sort of mystical ruins in there. Mystical ruins? Sounds like the exact sort of place an archaeologist might go. Well, we should get going now, but thanks for all your help, Pearl. You're welcome, Mr. Apollo. Please take care. You too, my friend! What did I say we go find that cave, son? It sounds like the orb might finally be within our grasp. This treasure hunt is shaping up to be the real deal. <laughs> really gets the blood pumping, doesn't it? Oh, it does, and it'll get the blood pumping even harder next time on Ace Attorney's Spirit of Justice, because regrettably that's all the time we have for now. So I was wrong, we didn't manage to finish it off this time, but I assume we're not going to have uh, too much more of this to go when we actually get to that cave and have a look around. That's probably going to be where it ends, so we're likely to get into the trial sequence uh, next time on Ace Attorney's Spirit of Justice. But that's all for now. Got a buttload of evidence from the actual... Uh, from Sarge in the study this time, we have a, a, a very clear picture of what some of the qualities of this man are and what some of the conflicts that might arise in the future are. We've got a specifically mentioned opaque orb sent in an email from Dr. Buff to whoever Paw711 is. Paul Atitian work? Nothing. Phoenix ace right <laughs> i suppose it wouldn't be entirely out of the uh, realm of possibility that phoenix was the one who asked him to look into um the orb if he only just came back from kurain in a hurry and being that he's uh, been friends with maya and pearls for some time he's probably has would ha it's not unreasonable to assume he'd have connections here although that said doc buff only recently uh moved here didn't he anyway i can already see the glasses and the doctor's poor eyesight meaning he couldn't read anything without them being important, his hurried disposition uh, before uh, the, his, his untimely death seems pretty suspicious to the point that it probably wasn't an accident. But maybe, I mean, it may well be that it could have been an accident. Like, he genuinely slipped and fell and died because he, his shoes were wet after... Oh, no, I guess you don't wear shoes indoors in Japan. His shoes probably in socks or whatever. They could well have been wet as well if the mud had gotten into the, his boot and everything, though. I could believe that he slipped and died and, it, and no one actually killed him in uh, going for the orb, but just it seems super sketchy considering how many people wanted it. But I could also very easily believe that someone killed him trying to get the location of the orb out of him and failing to do so at the time. Whatever the case, I'm sure we'll find something useful at these ruins. I doubt it'll be... It, it's definitely not going to be a dead end. Whether we'll find the orb itself... I, um, I'm suspicious. I doubt it. I think we'll either find that we don't have, it'll be like locked in a, in some kind of lockbox we don't have the combination for, or something like that, or it'll clearly have been stolen already, which will be useful because the only one who we think knew uh, he went there was Pearl, and we can ask her if she told anyone else, so on and so forth. Nevertheless, next video on the channel is going to be some more Hitman 2 Silent Assassin, and next time here... Probably finishing up this investigation, getting to the trial. A lot of evidence is shaping up in very interesting ways here. I'm excited for this one. But if Edge is hanging around, Phoenix is sneaking around somehow. We've met Pearl again. There's been a lot of uh, a lot of old faces coming back here in curious ways. Thank you so very much for coming around. Hopefully, I'll see you around. Emerald's gonna be out of here now. Peace. Go to the helicopter and down. Now, Odo has picked up the guidance system. Always going there first. Oh, okay, interesting. So that means he's in the basement. He should be like, right about to tear up these stairs. I could get him in the guidance system in one fell swoop, that would be awesome.